So, hi, welcome everybody. My name is Yana. I'm a DDS Stop Advocate Coordinator in the North Region in the East Hartford office. Varian, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Varian Salters and I'm a self-advocate coordinator for DDS in the North Region in the Willimannic office. So welcome everyone to Free and Cheap in Connecticut. And this picture is of a gem we have here in the state. And a lot of people don't know that it exists and that it's pretty much free, except for the Science Center. This is the Riverfront Recapture Plaza in Hartford, in East Hartford. This is the Hartford side of it. And there's a lot of free concerts that go on there and events and festivals during the year. And then if you walk across this bridge, you get to the Great River Park in East Hartford. And you can walk around, you can go fishing. There's a lot to do and it's all free. So welcome, welcome to our presentation. We are so glad you decided to join us today. Today we will learn about free and cheap things you can do around the state. So one of the things we're gonna learn about is our wonderful state park system, which is free for all to enjoy. How to be a tourist in your own town, how to use Groupon to save money, how to save money on memberships to gyms and health clubs. Got any questions? Want to comment? Don't be afraid. Speak up. We would love to hear from you. The first thing that we're going to talk about is our wonderful Connecticut State Parks and Forests. And they're all over the state. So in the summertime, you can go to Hammonasset Beach State Park, Rocky Neck. Parkness Memorial State Park, Sherwood Island State Park down in the down in down in, uh, they're all on the shoreline. Sherwood Island is special because that's where our state 9-11 memorial is. And all of these parks, including the shoreline ones, are available all year round. In Rocky Hill, there's the dinosaur state park. One of my favorites in the fall is Talcott Mountain State Park in Simsbury. It's a wonderful trail. And then when you get up to the tower, you can go up to the tower and there's a wonderful museum and observation deck. It's very nice. There's something to do all year round at the state parks.
I do that. Well, one thing that's a kind of a hidden gem is the Meg's Point Nature Center at Hammonasset Beach, Beach State Park. And if you've ever gone to Hammonasset Beach and park at the Meg's Point lot, you've probably seen this nature center. But if you would walk by it and you wouldn't even know it's there, this is open year round and it's completely free. And the current hours, starting in November through March, it's going to be open Tuesday through Sunday, 10 to 4. Well, here's a question for you. Okay. Uh, what if you can uh, combine a day at the beach, maybe with a, a trip to the zoo? All right, sounds good. In this week's One Tank Trip, Channel 3's Wendell Edwards takes us to a state park that's making that all possible. Most everyone likes to go to the beach, but at Hammond Asset Beach State Park, just across from the East Point Beach area, is what Rick calls one of the best nature centers no one knows is here. I would absolutely say this is a best kept secret. I still meet people that live here in town that don't know about the Meg's Point Nature Center. The Meg's Point Nature Center is essentially a small aquarium slash zoo. It's operated by Deep. Your turtles have teeth. Raise your hand if you think yes, turtles have teeth. But Ranger Russ runs it daily. Today, he's talking turtles. The center is all about nature. When you walk inside the nature center, you are immediately greeted by birds in their habitat. It's on purpose. There are immersive experiences as you visit each space within the nature center. It'll feel like you're in that space in the wild. For example, the at the beach room looks like you're sitting on the beach itself. The rocks and minerals on display here are mostly native to the state. We focused on things that are found in Connecticut. Now, they may not be native species, but they are species either invasive or non-natives that are now found in Connecticut. The under the sea room takes you underwater, and you'll find this guy here, the lobster that turned blue. I think the lobster is the coolest thing in the building, but everybody wants to see snakes and turtles. In the Woods is the most popular exhibit, but the Nature Center offers more, from those turtle talks to nature walks. It's all part of the experience. Ranger Russ tells me everything here at Bex Point Nature Center is free. Everything except the canoe trips. They don't happen every day, and they do come with a nominal fee. Canoe trips, we ask for $5 per participant. The center is open this summer, Tuesday through Sunday. This is the best part of this nature center every day. You see the light go on sometimes where people realize something that they never knew or something, they put something together that they didn't realize before today. That, that's such a rewarding experience. Which at Max Point Nature Center is actually the point. At Hammond Asset Beach, Wendell Edwards, Channel 3. I witnessed news. They're a great place to visit. Now, this is another gem we have in the state of Connecticut. Varian, do you want to tell them all about Camp Harkness? Varian? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> the video to work. Here we go. Yeah, Camp Harkness is the, in Waterford, Connecticut, and it's owned by uh, DDS. The park is exclusively for people with the disabilities and their families and caregivers. And you can get a free pass to Harkness from your uh, DDS case manager. Those who receive services from the autism division over at DSS can also get a Harkness pass. And they, they have a lot of free stuff down there. They have... Um, Sometimes they have dances, and I know they recently just had a fall fest, and you could even, they even have cabins you can go uh, camping in. They have pavilions you can rent out, they have grills. Yeah. A, they have a beautiful beach, and it's all accessible. It's a real... But this is the jam I was talking about in the beginning, the riverfront. One of those things that if you're in Hartford, you see it all, every day, but you have to experience it. Hi, my name is Mike Zaleski. I'm the CEO of Riverfront Recapture. Welcome to our riverfront parks. Oh. 
Riverfront Recapture manages, maintains, and operates four parks and their connected river walks and trails along the Connecticut River. Parks and green spaces have never been more important. Our parks are here for you. And while so many things have changed this year, our parks haven't. They're your parks. They're a place to find peace in the crazy world we're living in. So use them. Visit our parks. Walk from Riverside Park to Great River Park. Run the stairs at Mortensen Riverfront Plaza. Go fishing at Charter Oak Landing. Bike the river walk. Stretch out in the grass and have a family picnic. Explore the trails. See the sculptures. Relax and enjoy the fresh air. There are so many ways to connect with nature here. Come find your connection to the Connecticut River. And there are lots of fun things that they do there. They have, in the summertime, they have free concerts. They have a 4th of July festival, food truck festival. But that this is open all year round. They have walking trails that you can use. There's playground for the little ones. Watch apple cider being made at B. F. Clyde Cider Mill. This is a season event. It's fun for the whole family. Visit B. F. Clyde Cider Mill, which is the only steam powered cider mill in the US. From September to December to watch apple cider being produced. Well, you'll certainly be tempted to buy some cider and delicious apple snacks. Watching the cider making demonstration is free. Another free thing you can do in Connecticut is Connecticut's College Arbitrarium in New London, Connecticut. The Connecticut College Arbitrarium is a beautiful nature area just outside of downtown New London. The Arbitrarium features 770 acres of man manicure. Um, sorry, looking at the chat. Gardens included native plants and trees. This is an ideal place to come. Another free thing man, manicured gardens included native plants and trees. This is an ideal place to come with a book or take photos. So your library is a great place to access things for free. So here are five reasons everyone should have a library card. Free books from mysteries and graphic novels to cookbooks and biographies. Your library has something for readers of all ages and interests. The best part, in addition to physical copies, libraries offer instant online access to free ebooks and audiobooks. So if you're looking for free books for your Kindle, this is the place and audiobooks, which you can download from home with the push of a button. Movies, music, magazines, and more. Library card holders can check out way more than just books. Many libraries also offer free access to streaming video and music, as well as online versions of your favorite magazines and newspapers. These resources are great for staying entertained and can save you big money on media subscription fees. Access to databases and courses. Libraries offer extensive electronic resources for students, small business owners, job seekers, hobbyists, and lifelong learners. Whether you're looking for free software to pick up a new language, coding tutorials to boost your resume, or patent records to develop a new invention, your library has free access to amazing databases and classes online. And this is one of my favorites besides the books and movies. Big savings on museums and cultural attractions. Some libraries also loan out free or discounted passes to local museums, national parks, performance venues, and other cultural attractions. So my library, the West Hartford Library, gives out free museum passes. So I can go to say the Westworth Athenaeum, the Pequot Museum. I can go to, those are just a few of the museums I can get a pass to.
Hi everyone, I'm Adina Menzel and this is my sister Kara. You might know me as Elphaba in Wicked or the voice of Elsa in Frozen, so it's no surprise I love to sing. And I love to write. Together we wrote a children's book about a little mouse named Dee who loves to sing very loudly. One of the best places to find your voice is at the library. And during Library Card Sign-Up Month, we want you to explore all the library has to offer. I love my library card because it lets my imagination sing. And I love my library card because it's a little car with a big voice. Let, Let your, your imagination get loud with a library, library card. Another program where you can get into museums for free or reduce admission is called the Museums for All program. And it lets people who have EBT cards. So this is what the EBT card looks like. In Connecticut, it's called the Connect card. It lets them into museums and other cultural attractions for free. And you can go to museumsforall.org for a list of museums participating with the program. Another place you can go to for free with your EBT card is the Mystic Aquarium. CT or Rhode Island EBT card holders are eligible for a free ticket for themselves and up to three accompanying guests. Remember, you must book your tickets ahead of time on the website. And card holder must show their CT or Rhode Island EBT card, valid matching personal identification and time tickets to enter the aquarium. Another free thing to do in Connecticut is the Submarine Library and Museum in Groton, Connecticut. See submarine artifacts, documents, and photographs and learn about the United States submarine history at the Submarine Library and Museum. Their crowning jewel is the historic Natalis Submarine, which you can tour and learn about during your visit. Parking and administration to the submarine library and museum is always free. One thing you could do that's free in Connecticut is free concerts at the, in the Wolfden at Mohegan Sun. Mention Connecticut to anyone from out of state and they are likely to have heard or visited the casinos. Though many activities at both casinos come at a cost, Mohegan Sun frequently holds free concerts in their wolf den and free parking to that, and you'll have yourself a budget night out. Just keep in mind to enter the surrounding the wolf den, you need to be 21 or over and have a valid ID. Another free thing to do in Connecticut is the Essex Steam Train Station in Essex, Connecticut. Wander the grounds of the old Essex Steam Train Station and Riverboat for free. Kids will love seeing the old station building and the numerous trains parked on nearby tracks. Bring your camera for photos with the trains. There are also paid options for visiting the Essex steam train station, including rides on the steam trains and dinner trains. Check their website to learn more. Another free thing to do in Connecticut is the William Bennett Museum of Art in Stores, Connecticut, located on Yukon's campus. Visit the William Bennett Museum of Art, which features exciting visiting exhibitions as well as a permanent collection. The collection features over 6,500 artworks from the 15th through the 21st centuries. During your visit to the William Bennett Museum of Art, consider taking advantage of one of Yukon's free campus tours, or other free events. So there's lots of stuff. And we already was saying there was this museum you can go to at the Yukon Stores campus. There's lots of stuff, other stuff you can do there. You can get to stores easily and cheaply. Right now, you can get to stores for free until December 1st to, from 
the Hartford area by taking the 913 express bus. And the express bus will drop you off either at the transit center in downtown stores, or it will drop you off on campus. Some free and cheap things to do on campus. Visit the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry. Explore downtown stores. Grab an ice cream and see the cows at the Yukon Dairy Barn. Visit the J. Robert Donnelly Husky Heritage Sports Museum and cheer on the Yukon men's and women's basketball teams at Gamble Pavilion. Some of the tickets can be had for very cheap. One of my favorite places to visit is downtown New Haven. You can get there cheaply and easily from the Hartford area on the Hartford Line train and people with disabilities pay reduced fare we get a 50% discount on the train. So it's only $4 each way. Get off the train at the State Street Station to access downtown New Haven. And there's some cool and free museums to visit like the Yale Center for British Art and the Yale Art Gallery. Yeah, I see someone raised their hand. Hey, hi, this is Vijay, Nadia Vijay. Mm -hmm. Hey, actually, like, uh, how can we have this uh, uh, people with disability can pay the uh, reduced uh, fare, right? So how can we show them that uh, we are the disability uh, child? Like, will they ask for any ID or certificate? They don't usually, whenever I've used it, they haven't asked, but if you have a Medicare card, that should be enough. But I usually buy my ticket on the machine and they've never asked me. No, we don't, have... Have, we don't have the Medicare card. But uh, he's under IEP, he's on PPT in the school. Like he's, he's going for 10th grade in uh, East Windsor Middle uh, High School. Yeah, you, it shouldn't be a problem. If you buy it on the machine, buy your tickets on the ticket machine, they don't, and they never ask. Okay. So they, they, won't, they never ask for the ID or uh, certificate, right? For the disability. Yeah, they never, they usually never ask. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. The cool and free museums to visit the Yale Center for British Art and the Yale Art Gallery. They're both world-class museums and they're free. And you could also walk around the grounds of the Yale University. There are lots of great places to eat in downtown New Haven. My personal favorite is Claire's Cornucopia. Free and cheap in Connecticut. Tours of the Connecticut State Capitol. Self-guided and free one-hour guided tours are available to the public on Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., excluding state holidays. Learn about history of the Capitol buildings and the rooms within the Capitol during a tour using the printed PTF pamphlets available online. Check the website for specific times for guided tours. Free and cheap in Connecticut, local town and recreation departments. Check with your local town and recreation department. They have a list of local town parks and a list of local events that can be free. So this is a list of the special the special needs programming through the town of West Hartford. This is mostly for adults. These are for adults and teens. They have the Friday night socials. There's dances and bingo. There's a social club, adaptive Zumba, my self-advocacy group I run from the town of West Hartford. We, my group is free. Our next meeting is on November 2nd, and it's at the West Hartford Public Library in the meeting room. And if you have any questions about the special needs activities, you can contact, in West Hartford, that is, you can contact Danny Brown. She's the coordinator for the special needs program. Another awesome thing that we have in Hartford is the sensory friendly or relaxed programs at the Bushnell. And sensory friendly or relaxed performances and events are designed to create an experience that is welcoming to all families and friends 
on the autism spectrum or with sensory sensitivities. And we've had people who are autistic, we've had little ones come, we've had adults come, we've had people with intellectual and developmental disabilities come, and slight adjustments to the production are made, including reduction of any jarring sounds or strobe and spotlights that shine into the audience. House lights are fairly dim, but remain on. Um, people are allowed to get up and move around if they need to. You can bring in snacks if you need to. We have autism experts in the lobbies. We have chill out corners. And our volunteers are trained in assisting people with autism. So this is, this, these are the shows and the programs for this season. We have the Nutcracker, the Holiday Open House. There's going to be a self-care Sunday, the Ballet Theater Cinderella, and this concert. And more information, you could go on to our web, our, I volunteer at the Bushnell, so I say our, the Bushnell website for more info and tickets. And you can contact Pat Bruska at the Bushnell for more information. And these are a lot of fun. I volunteered for them. And they're a lot of fun. So on that note, if you love theater, but you can't afford to see shows, you can volunteer at the local theater. I've actually been volunteering for the Bushnell for, I'm in my 11th season, and I love it. And the Hartford Stage, the Bushnell, and the Schubert Theaters all utilize volunteers as their front of house team. There are some other theaters in Connecticut also that utilize volunteers. I don't remember the names of those. And some things you might do as a front of house volunteer include ushering, seating patrons, and keeping an eye, making sure no one's texting during the show, making sure the patrons are, no one's getting hurt, making sure they, they get where they need to go. You could be passing out programs. You could be operating the elevator or the coat check or just assisting patrons. We have a position called patron guide where all you do is you answer questions. And in exchange for volunteering, you get a chance to see all sorts of shows for free. And you also get a chance to meet new people and give back to your community. There are some caveats though. So there's no guarantee you will see the whole show. For example, if I'm in a position like ticket scanner or patron guide, I miss the first part of the show, the opening part of the show, because I'm out just in case I'm outside the doors of the theater in case there are latecomers. And there is no guarantee you have a seat. If it's a sold out show, like for example, for Hamilton, we didn't have seats in the theater. We could either stand in the back or watch on the monitors. And you have to be prepared to be on your feet the whole time as a volunteer, but it's a great volunteer job and I highly recommend it. The volunteer program at the Bushnell, it's an opportunity for you to give back to a community. You could be a ticket scanner, you could be an usher, you could be a patron guide, but you're here helping other community members. It's refreshing to come through that door and see someone smiling and greeting them. Some people say, well, how in the world do you have time to do this? And my answer is always, you make time for the things that you enjoy. I'm a theater lover, and I love people. It's such a great way for me to just decompress from my stressful job during the day. I've had a number of people come up to me and just look at me like this and say, you suck a warm smile, thank you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're very welcome, okay. Something as simple as that, I said, thank you. It does really matter. I think it really is special because there are not that many arts and performing arts centers in the country that really utilize volunteers as heavily, I think, as the Bushnell does. We are the face of the Bushnell. We are the first people that the patrons get to interact with when they come to see this beautiful theater. I really think they see our passion, they see our love, and really make people aware of just what a gem we have here in the city of Hartford. We're more than just Broadway shows. We have weddings, we have 
graduations. Um, we do a lot of other community events uh, for education. And I really think for me, it's kind of made me more aware of the Hartford community as a whole. I think it's exposed me to aspects of the arts in Hartford that I might not otherwise have been able to uh, take advantage of. Everyone should have a part in the arts. When you're coming to one place to see something in common with 1,000, 2,000, 2,798 other people to enjoy it. It really, it, it opens your eyes. I consider it an honor because this theater is so rich in history. It's amazing because it really is, this is not a job. It's, it's a passion. And I think any of the volunteers that you talk to would say the same thing. And the Bushnell is very open. They're very accepting of people with disabilities. There's a lot of, a couple of us on the volunteer team and they're very accommodating, they're really nice. Now, one way you can save money on shows and other activities is with a wonderful website called Groupon. And much like a physical coupon book, these are virtual coupons, and much like a physical coupon book, you can use Groupon to get deals of up to 70% off of all sorts of things, from food and retail products to travel and services. When you use Groupon, you can see local deals as well as deals from any location you search for. You can use Groupon on a computer and from a phone or tablet. Sign up for Groupon through their website at Groupon.com. Groupon is also available for mobile devices on the Apple App Store or the Android app. Use your email address to sign up for Groupon or log in with your Facebook or Google account to speed up the sign up process. If you plan to use Groupon on your phone and computer, log in to both at the same time. For example, if you log on to Groupon with Facebook on your phone, do the same on your computer to access the same account. Hi, my name's Allison, and I'm from techboomers.com. Today, you're going to learn how to use Groupon. Now that you signed up for Groupon, it's time to take a look at some great deals. Here's what you'll learn in this tutorial. How to find a deal on Groupon. How to read a Groupon deal. And how to purchase a Groupon voucher. To find a deal on Groupon, it's a good idea to know generally what you're looking for, or what category it might fall in. Once you get on Groupon.com and log in, you'll be taken to your Groupon's homepage. Here's the search bar. Search a keyword or phrase to see the types of deals that match your search. For example, if you type in gym, you'll see results for deals on fitness classes, gym memberships, personal training, and more. You'll notice there's a group on menu across the top. If you click local, you will see nearby group on deals. You can shop all deals or take a look at some of the categories such as automotive, beauty and spas, and things to do. All of these will be close to the address that you provided Groupon. Groupon Goods is a way to buy a product for less. While a lot of Groupon includes services, Groupon Goods offers physical products, such as home decor, electronics, and apparel. You can browse through Groupon Getaways to plan a trip for great rates on hotels, flights, and tourist attractions around the world. Check out our tutorial on Groupon Travel for more information. If you click Coupons, you can get online coupon codes and in-store coupons for a variety of popular stores like Walmart, Starbucks, and more. You'll notice this section says Valentine's. That's because this is the seasonal section, which changes periodically. 
It will change to reflect the season, such as winter getaways, or show if there's any holidays coming up, such as Easter or Christmas. It will give you access to Groupon vouchers that include related activities, apparel, sports, getaways, and more. Under Recommendations for You, or based on recently searched, you will see great deals based on your account activity. When scrolling down the home page, keep an eye out for many unique deal categories that aren't in the top menus. You might see something like date night deals, girls night out, or good for gifting. These are a great way to browse what you're looking for or to give you some ideas for some upcoming outings. You can also click View All to view all deals in that category. Once you've found a deal, you can check out the details of it quickly and easily. As a thumbnail, you can check out some of the basic details right in the Groupon box. These will help you decide if it's worth looking into. It will show some brief information about the deal, where the deal is being offered, if it's a good or food deal, the original value of the deal, and the discounted price. If you found a deal you're interested in, click anywhere inside the box to look at the deal in greater detail. This page will show you the percentage discount, how much money you're saving, how many people have bought it, and more. On the right hand side, it will also show you how much time is left before the deal expires. Note, if a deal expires on Groupon and you've already bought a voucher, the voucher is still valid. If you scroll down, you'll see the fine print. For example, this deal expires 90 days after purchase, has a limit of two per person, and shipping fees and tax are not included in this order. And they will be collected at checkout. Make sure you always read and understand the fine print before purchasing a Groupon. If you're interested in this Groupon, you checked out the fine print, and you're sure it's right for you, <laughs> click the green word buy. If there is more than one deal within the Groupon, for example, dinner for four or dinner for two, choose the deal that you prefer. You'll be taken to a page where you have to fill out your payment information if you haven't already filled it out with Groupon. Type in your name, credit card number, expiration date, and your security code. Your security code is a three-digit number often found on the back of your credit card. Then, enter in your billing address. When you're done, Click Complete Order. Congratulations, you've now purchased a Groupon. You'll receive an email confirmation of your order within a few moments. To redeem your Groupon, however, you'll have to check its status in My Groupons. Check out our tutorial on redeeming a Groupon voucher for more information. Now that you know how to use and buy goods on Groupon, check out some of these amazing deals and save way more than you would in store. And you can use Groupons, like she said, for activities. So say you want to go, for instance, bowling. There's Groupons for a bowling alley. Hi, my name's Allison, and I'm from TechBoomers.com. Today, you'll learn how to redeem a Groupon voucher. When you've purchased a deal on Groupon, you'll be given a voucher so you can redeem it for your service or product. Groupon will email an order confirmation but to get your voucher, you'll have to be logged in to Groupon. Click your name in the top right corner. Then, click My Groupons in the drop-down menu that appears. This will take you to a list of all the Groupons you've purchased. Click View Voucher to view that specific deal. A window will pop up asking if you're ready to use this Groupon. Once viewed, this order cannot be edited. Click Print Voucher or Click Save for later. Here you will see a printable voucher. It will include all the fine print you saw originally on the website, including any expiration dates, rules, or restrictions for using the voucher. If you intend to redeem the voucher online, there will be a Groupon code that you can just copy and paste onto the merchant's website to redeem. Be careful not to include any spaces. If the voucher you receive has to be redeemed in person, Print it out and present it to the merchant where you will be redeeming your deal. Be careful about just showing up. For some deals, you'll have to book a reservation or an appointment in advance. If you ever have any questions or concerns regarding the voucher, 
be sure to call up the business offering the Groupon. And that's how easy it is to redeem a Groupon voucher. Try buying and redeeming your vouchers today. Now, another place you can get great deals on events, movie tickets, theme parks, museums is the AAA. If you have a AAA membership, you can always ask the place where you're at. Do you take AAA? Some museums do have a AAA discount. If you're now, how to save on gym membership? Remember, try it out first. Many gyms have a free trial where you can try out the gym before joining to see if it's a good fit for you. Search for better prices online. While you're deciding on which gym to join, scour the web. You may find membership discounts or deals on classes on a gym's website or through sites such as Groupon. Negotiate a deal. When you decide which club you'd like to join, speak with a manager instead of a salesperson. Managers are more likely to be able to negotiate a better gym membership price for you. You can also join a low-cost, no-frills gym like Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is a great gym, but they won't have certain things. If you're looking for a pool or a sauna, they're not going to have that. It's very bare bones. They have the cardio equipment. They have the weight equipment. They have a locker room, but that's it. Very bare bones. Important. This is really important. Read the contract. One of the most expensive charges you could eventually encounter is a cancellation fee. Although you may not be able to get it removed, you should be aware of the terms in advance so that you don't get stuck paying a penalty for a membership you no longer use. You might have to let the club know you don't that you want to cancel two months in advance, for example, or submit a notarized letter to end the contract. And gyms like the YMCA and the Jewish Community Center offer scholarships and discounts to people who are low income or people with disabilities. It's so frustrating to me. I get call after call from people who've been ripped off in gym memberships. They go into a place and kind person greets them. And then before they know it, they've signed a long-term contract for a gym membership. And often people will say, well, that's not what they told me. That's not what they said I was doing. But all that matters is what you signed your name to. I want you to know gyms work two different ways. There are the contract kind of clubs that get you in a contract and hope you never work out. And then there are the places that bill you month to month or quarterly that the way they serve you is doing a great job so you'll stay a member and you keep on paying. Obviously, that's the kind you wanna join. One of the best places to look is at fitness centers attached to hospitals, major medical centers. They never require a contract and often have fantastic facilities at great prices. So why not try there? Or even the YMCA. I'm Clark Howard. Welcome to Only 411 Destinations, the world's premier online portal for explorers and travelers that want the most out of life. What good is living a life you've been given if all you do is stand in one place? Get out and explore. Only 411 is here to help. Better get to living and explore the world both near and afar. Only 411 provides you with the information to make your next trip a memorable adventure. Stay informed with Only 411. Click to subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this video with others that need the 411. Let's get started with the best places to visit in Connecticut. Number 11, Roseland Cottage. Ranking 11th position, this place is often called the Pink House because of its characteristic color. Roseland Cottage is the summer home of Henry and Lucy Bowen. Their families entertain prominent visitors here, including four U.S. presidents and other political party figures. An excellent example of the Gothic Revival style popular in the mid-1840s, with a steep roof, sharply pointed gables, and elaborate ornamental fretwork under the eaves. 
the interior is just as richly decorated in Victorian style with pocket doors, pattern carpets, wall coverings that imitated tooled leather, and diamond pane windows with inserts of stained glass. Inside the carriage, the barn is the oldest surviving indoor bowling alley in the U.S. The house overlooks a parterre garden with 600 yards of boxwood hedge surrounding 21 beds of perennials and colorful annuals. The house and gardens are a National Historic Landmark. Number 10. The All-Rich Contemporary Art Museum Suppose you like to admire a different kind of creativity. In that case, you should visit the Aldrich Contemporary Art Museum, features changing exhibits of thought-provoking modern art and does not gather art or hold a permanent collection. It showcases works based on varying themes and is dedicated to promoting the work of innovative artists who encourage viewers to think creatively. Also on the grounds is a two-acre outside sculpture garden. Several other attractions in Connecticut are good places to visit for tourists interested in art. The Weir Farm National Historic oh. Site in Wilton and the Florence Griswold Museum in Old Lyme. Weir Farm was the summer home and studio of artist J. Alden Weir. The Griswold Museum is a restored 1817 mansion whose owner hosted several American Impressionist artists and collected their works. Number 9. Wadsworth Athenaeum Wadsworth Athenaeum is one of the country's oldest free public museums, displaying more than 50,000 works of art in its Gothic-style building. Awe-inspiring are its collections of American arts, especially works of the Hudson River School. More than 5,000 American works of art are portraits by John Singleton Copley, paintings by Georgia O'Keeffe and Andrew Wyeth, sculptures by Alexander Calder. The European collections feature Italian Baroque paintings, surrealist artists, and impressionists, including Claude Monet and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. The European Decorative Arts Collection comprises over 7,000 pieces from ancient glass and bronzes to ceramics from Meissen, Vincennes, and Sevres. The Cabinet of Art and Curiosity Room was inspired by the wealthy Victorian collectors who displayed their treasures in cabinets without labels or curation. These collections mix artworks with natural history and other curiosities. Digital touchscreens provide information that would typically be on labels in a modern museum. Number 8. Submarine Forest Museum and the USS Nautilus the United States Navy's official submarine museum is on the Thames River in Groton, housing submarine artifacts, photographs, and exhibits. The highlight to most visitors is the chance to board and explore the USS Nautilus, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine. Here, they get a sense of what life and work were like for a submarine crew. Elsewhere in the museum, exhibits follow the development of undersea travel from its beginnings with David Bushnell's turtle constructed in 1776. A 45-minute A Century of Silent Service covers the submarine's forces' early history through World War II in the museum's theater. In the mini-theater, 41 for Freedom is a 20-minute film on the Navy's ballistic submarines design, construction, and mission in the Cold War. If you made it this far, Make sure to stick around to the end of this video and hit that like button. Let's get started on our next destination. Number 7. Mashantucket Pequot Museum and Research Center The Mashantucket Pequot Museum and Research Center is a tribally owned complex that exhibits southern New England's Native American and natural history. The indoor exhibits feature dioramas, text panels, interactive computer programs, and a series of films that highlight the evolution of Mashantucket's Pequot's life. Visitors will encounter a 16th century coastal Pequot village and learn about life on a reservation from 1675 to the 1970s. In a simulated glacial crevice from 18,000 years ago, they can experience the creaking ice and winds as they discover more about the effects of the last ice age. Number 6. Lake Compounds Family Theme Park Lake Compounds Theme Park in Bristol is the oldest operating amusement park in the United States and is home to a 1927 wooden roller coaster and a 1911 carousel. This fantastic summer family outing features all kinds of rides and games, which is a pretty fun discovery. Better explore this on your next visit!
One of Connecticut's largest water park, Crocodile Cove, has wave pools, water slides, and sections specially designed for younger children. There are also kiddie rides, including a mini roller coaster for those who can't get into the other rides. Number 5. The Mark Twain House and Museum Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain and Olivia Clemens, moved into their newly built three-story Hartford mansion in 1874, and it was in the height of the late Victorian style. Louis C. Tiffany was one of the designers for the home's interior, which shows many of the exotic decorative influences of that time. Clemens wrote a few of his best-known books while living there. The Victorian Gothic Mansion is a National Historic Landmark. Adjacent to the villa is the restored home of author Harriet Beecher Stowe, author of Uncle Tom's Cabin. You can tour the Gothic Revival Cottage where she lived from 1873 to 1896. Number 4. Gillette Castle State Park Located in East Haddam, this unique Gillette Castle is the 1919 home of William Hooker Gillette, known for the actor who played the original Sherlock Holmes. The 24-room home has the appearance of a medieval fortress from the outside, and the interior has a hand-hewn woodwork and unique features designed by Gillette himself, including wooden door latches and light switches. He created the walking trails through the estate that are just as unusual with wooden trestles and arched bridges. In the spring, summer, and fall, you can cross the Connecticut River from Chester on the Hadleen Ferry with beautiful views as you approach the castle. Number 3. Mystic Aquarium and Institution for Exploration You can encounter ocean animals at the Mystic Aquarium and experience birds of the outback, an interactive exhibit. Reach in and touch a ray, go beak to nose with a penguin, and get up close to beluga whales and other famous animals, such as African penguins, stellar sea lions, and blue-tongued skinks. Other things to do here include animations in the Wild Arctic exhibit that allows visitors to interact virtually with a polar bear and meet a walrus. An indoor dinosaur trail in Jurassic Giants featuring 12 giant animatronic dinosaurs includes Tyrannosaurus rex and other prehistoric creatures. Additional attractions include XD Motion Theater Deep Sea 3D displays based on Dr. Robert Ballard's expeditions. Number 2. Yale University Museums Center of New Haven covers many outstanding museums, the most important of which are the Yale University Art Gallery and the Peabody Museum of Natural History. The art museum's collections are solid art from the... The Peabody Museum, just as I know, is closed for renovations currently, but the Yale Museum, the Art Museum, and the Center for British Art are currently open. Ancient Mediterranean World, Africa, and the ancient Americans. Also strong on American artists, these galleries display works of John Singleton Copley, Winslow Homer, George Bellows, John Singer Sargent, and other premier artists. The Peabody Museum of Natural History features various collections, including Roman and ancient Greeks, and even dinosaurs and Native American cultures. The latter groups feature arts and everyday items from Cheyenne, Navajo, and many other cultures. You can even find Egyptian mummies and other artifacts. Built by Aero Saarinen, Franco Gehry, and other prominent architects, this place is an attraction by itself. Number 1. Mystic Seaport Ranking on to number 1 is this historical seaport village as part of one of the most prominent oceanic museums in the United States. You can admire a collection of floating craft, including the world's last remaining wooden whaling ship, Charles W. Morgan, 1841. Other historical ships featured are the Joseph Conrad, the schooner, L.A. Dunton, and various steam vessels. The buildings on the 19-acre grounds are not only the houses and stores of a small village, but also the sailmakers, shipbuilders, and others who provision the ships. Several museums feature ship figureheads, marine art, the history of shipping, and ship models. Are you going to visit any of these places, or have you already made them a destination? Let us know in the comments section below. And hey, if you liked our list of top 11 destinations, then don't forget to hit the like button. A lot of these museums, like the Wadsworth, Harriet Beecher Stowe, a lot of these museums, you can get a free pass to them from your public library. Subscribe to only 411. So another way to save money and see new stuff is to be a tourist in your own town or your own state.
want to go on a getaway but don't have the funds to travel, be a tourist in your own town. Here's how it works. Head to any hotel lobby or welcoming center and grab some brochures and local guidebooks. Also, ask the person at the front desk what attractions they recommend to tourists. Then call the attractions or research them online to see if they offer any discounts to locals or AAA if you have a AAA membership or EBT if you have an EBT card. Get a friend to show you around like they would if you were a tourist. Move around differently than you would normally. Leave, so leave the car at home and use public transportation. So like I was saying, if you wanted to go to New Haven, you could take the train. The Hartford Line train is inexpensive. And if you get off at the Stage Street stop in New Haven, you'll be right in the middle of downtown New Haven and you won't have to worry about parking the car. If you're going into downtown Hartford, for example, to the Bush and all, or for a state capital tour, take the bus or to the river front recapture, take the city bus. It's free until December 1st. And it's a lot easier than trying to find parking in downtown Hartford. Grab a meal at a popular local restaurant. And to learn more about local attractions and order a free visitor's guide, go to ctvisit.com. So I've got, since we have some time, it could share some cool attractions. Now, one cool attraction is if you like candy, Connecticut is actually the home to the Pez factory. You know, the little Pez dispensers, the candy and the dispensers are actually are made right here in Connecticut in orange. And if you go to the welcome center, one of the welcome centers for Connecticut is at the old state house right in downtown Hartford, which is another gem. You can get a coupon for a discount and getting into the Pez factory. And I think the library also has a pass to the, the Pez factory museum. And if you're going to New Haven, it's right near New Haven. It's pretty inexpensive and it's a lot of fun. And yes, you do, you do get some free candy, free samples of candy at the Pest Factory. Bucket list continues this morning in Orange. Yeah, Fox 61's Keith McGillivray is at a place that's perfect for families. He's at the Pez Factory. Keith, what's going on? A lot is going on, Tim and Erica. Good morning. What I'm loving about this place is if you have kids of any age, they're going to love this. Our host, Sean, is back this morning. We got kind of a wide-eyed look at production earlier, but you're going to walk me through what it takes to make Pez on luckily a smaller scale because I can't hang with the pros. Carol, you have your hand up? There were just um, a lot of questions I had for after the presentation because I, there's lots of things I didn't know. So um, I I can wait till after the presentation. I just yeah, that would be good. Lots of questions right now. In there, what is going into our pens this morning? Well, this uh, area is kind of where we show what happens on a much larger scale. So we've got a scaled down version, a miniaturized uh, demonstration here. We showed the ingredients. This is what we start with, just a granular table sugar. This is what it looks like after we do the first process, which is mill that sugar down into a powder. We add some flavor, some color. We get a product that looks like this. And at this point, we're ready to start making candy. So I'm going to turn this over to you. We've got our mix. We've got our press. So grab a scoop. We'll load up our machine. All right, the pressure is on. Here we go. Margot Farrell, this is for you. I know you wanted to be here. One scoop in. We're shutting the gates here. And then as I press the green button, I'm told it's easy as that. Walk us through what's happening in this process now. Well, this is exactly what happens on the big machines. This is uh, making the candy one at a time. As you see that, that die going up and down, it's applying 3,000 pounds of pressure to that powder. It creates the tablet shape. It kicks it out, it fills that cavity, and it'll keep doing it over and over again. But this is the exact same thing that we do on a much larger scale every day. So kids are doing this with their family for $3. What's the reaction you 
you get when the machine starts pumping out the pens? I think they're surprised how quick and how fast it is. They're like, what? It's already making it? There's no heat? Or, you know, they didn't know it was a powder. People think it's a liquid sometimes or that you have to put heat. It takes time to make. It's really not. It's a very simple process, and it really always has been. So this kind of demonstrates that. And, uh, you know, when this gets done, we'll pull it out, and you can try a fresh-made sample of Pez. The pressure is on as this wraps up. And again, you're pumping out quite a bit of this stuff on a daily or weekly basis. Oh, that's correct. We make about 12 million individual candy tablets each and every day here. So, you know, do the math on that over a week, a month, a year. It turns out to be a lot of candy. All right, so the pressure is on. I made this batch earlier. Is this pumps out? You want to try a piece and let me know how I did? Yeah, let's try. Did I cut Great. it? Great, absolutely, you nailed it. All right, so we told people, can you guess the sixth the most popular flavor, or number six, drum roll please, it was raspberry, so let us know what your favorite flavor was. If you have a spot you think we should check out as part of our Connecticut winter bucket list, let us know, it is easy to do. Share61 at box61.com or hashtag share61, how did I do? Excellent. You can also see a lot of Pet, uh, a lot of cool Pez dispensers from, from around the years at the Pez factory. Yeah, we had a lot of fun when we were there. And did you know that Pez candy was definitely invented, was invented as a way to get people to quit smoking. It was invented as a quit smoking aid and it became a very popular candy. Another place that's inexpensive is the Bushnell Park Carousel. It's, I think, currently closed for the season, but it's open in the spring and summer, and it will be open for free rides during First Night Hartford. That's another awesome thing. If you're looking for something fun and inexpensive to do on New Year's Eve, First Night in Hartford is one of the largest inexpensive New Year's events in the state. It's a lot of different organizations in downtown Hartford open their doors to public and you can go for ice skating for free. You can go ride the carousel. You, you do need to buy a bracelet, a wristband for first night and they have fireworks at six o'clock at night and fireworks at midnight. That's another thing that's opening soon is the ice skating rink. You can actually go ice skating for completely free in Bushnell Park in Hartford. And that includes skate rentals. Our fall uh, bucket list tour took our team to Bushnell Park to the carousel in Hartford this morning. A Fox 61 viewer asked Keith McGilvery and Margot Farrell to check it out, and they found some affordable fun for the entire family. Leaves aren't the only thing turning in the capital city. As you can see, magnificent carvers of carousel pieces, brilliantly carved pieces, and this is a splendid ride, and one of actually four antiques that operate in Connecticut. Built in 1914, filled with 48 hand-carved wooden horses and two chariots circling around as the Wurlitzer Band organ plays on. It's a joyful environment that's affordable for families. We work very hard with the city of Hartford to keep it that way. The carousel, originally from Ohio and brought to Hartford in 1964, symbolizes Hartford's restoration. My kids love this right here. My, my little one especially, she's about to turn six. She loves the carousel. Uh, so she'll be jealous when she finds out, finds out that I was here this morning. We checked it out after visiting the New England Carousel Museum in Bristol, which helps restore the masterpieces. The excitement, it brings a lot of amusement. They're all unique, just like everybody here. The carousel is open seasonally through January and tickets will cost you two bucks. You can also book special events like birthdays and weddings. It's a historic structure. It's, it's beautiful. It's really a work of art. Uh, so uh, I encourage anybody to come and enjoy it, but also to spread the word about it. And if you're willing, uh, you know, make, make contribution, help support it. Not only is this a great carousel, but it also boasts the very best popcorn in the entire city. Margo? Oh, well, we'll a big back. thank you to Fox 61 viewer Morgan Ergo, who sent us the suggestion. And you can send us your suggestions as well. You can just download the Fox 61 News app, send us an email. at And you can make a day of it in Hartford. You can take the bus down, go to the Capitol, and then 
walk around Bushnell Park. There's a lot of beautiful statues you can look at. And you could get a pass over to the Wadsworth Athenaeum, look at the artwork. The Hartford Public Library is another gem in downtown Hartford. It has a lot of cool stuff, including if you like jazz music, they have Baby Grand Jazz, which is a free jazz concert series. Every winter, it, it's a free jazz concert series at the Hartford Library. And you could actually watch the concerts online, too. And my mom and I go to the concerts. Sometimes we even make a day out of it. We'll go see jazz, and we'll go to the Wadsworth Athenaeum in the morning, and then will go jazz, we'll go to see jazz concerts. And you can go virtually or you can go see the concerts for free at the Heart Public Library. And they're a lot of fun. Lots of different unique bands that come in and play. There's some different kinds of jazz music. And it's a lot of fun. And you get to enjoy an event with members of the community. And don't be afraid to go to Hartford. A lot of people think Hartford is scary. It's not scary. It's perfectly safe. Downtown Hartford is beautiful. It's perfectly safe. So please come enjoy it. There's plenty of parking at the, li at the library. There's a lot to do in downtown. Front Street, for instance. They just built a new section with that's part of Yukon, the Yukon Hartford campus. Really nice. Near the convention center, there's nice restaurants. There's a bookstore, the Yukon bookstore. You can catch a Yukon Huskies game at the Excel Center. And some of those tickets can be had for pretty inexpensive. And for those of you sports fans out there, you don't have to spend the big money to go to a Yankees or a Red Sox game or an NBA game, a WNBA game. You can go see a great basketball game for cheap if you go to colleges. Even a UConn game, UConn basketball game, some of the single tickets are not that expensive. But if you want to see some great sports action for low prices, you can check out some of the other colleges. It doesn't have to be UConn. I've gone to games at the University of Hartford their team, the Hawks, is very good. I've gone to CCSU for basketball games, and it's a great way to support local teams. And see, you can see a college campus. You can support your local team, cheer them on. And they play just as hard as the professional teams. The WNBA, by the way, some of those tickets can be had for inexpensive. And they play just as hard. And they're, yeah. Rachel was saying there are some great accessible trails around. Another gem of the West Hartford and Hartford Reservoirs at the MDC. They're also completely free. Oh, Scott, I can put the link in for that. The Bushnell Volunteer Program is basically they, in 1995, they got rid of their paid ushers and it's now a volunteer program. So you get to help seat people in the theater, pass out programs, scan tickets. It's a great program. And in exchange, you get to see shows for free. Sometimes they have free ticket offers for volunteers where they actually will offer us free tickets to shows. And we have a big volunteer party at the end of the season. It's a lot of fun. It's, it is sometimes a lot of work. You have to be on your feet for the whole show. But it's very worth it. You get to meet a lot of great new people and make a big difference. So before I go to questions, I want to. I did say that the pre ice skating rink in Bushnell Park is about to open, and if you're looking for something fun to do in Hartford on New Year's, first night Hartford is awesome. And it's very inexpensive and it's one of the biggest inexpensive New Year celebrations in the state.
There's concerts you can go to. Nana, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. From 2022. Before you show this video, can I please ask those questions? Sure, I'll call, I can stop and take questions from. Okay. Yeah, no, it's um, it's just that I I have quite a I have some questions. Um, one of which I I knew about getting a, a pass from Camp Harkness and everything, but I didn't know that you can get a, a pass like that from DSS. How would you go about doing that? Well, it's funny, the, the, the admissions for the autism division goes, it still goes through DDS. So we we still have a DDS number. So right. what I did was I, I called my case manager and I got my DDS number from her and then I filled out the form on I got from the DDS website. Yeah, that it is I open to any, Yeah, it is open to any Connecticut resident with a disability. You don't have to get I, DDS services. Yeah, that I understand. I'm wondering, maybe Varian, you can help me. Um, is DSS? How would you go about getting a pass for Camp Harkness through DSS? Not sure. I know DDS. You can get a pass through DDS too. Right. Through, um, the way I did it was because I, I get my services at DSS. I still have a DDS number, so I got that number from my case manager, and I got a pass. Yeah. Yeah. How I did it, I just reached out to the. Um, I think the lady that runs um, Camp Parkness, I think her name's Vicky, and she sent me an application. Okay. Um, also. Um, there's been a lot of mention of having reduced uh, reduced fare through an EBT card um, uh, through by going to Mystic or um, I've never heard of uh, museums for all, um, but there's been like few things where it mentions you can get uh reduced fare by an ebt card how would that work if you have your silver card is a connect card mm -hmm. you get dss yeah i DSS. Got, i have yep. one i have a connect yeah card. you have to go onto the website for the aquarium i can so get, send you the link and uh, and you can make your reservation and actually then when you what go would in there, be send, helpful your card and your id and you'll be all set what would be helpful is if you could share this whole presentation and email it to me. That way yeah, I can it'll be see the links and better and everything. It. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Yana, because um, there's just lots of things I didn't even know. Like, Carol, I didn't... do you have a library card? No, I don't. Well, if you get your library card, because if you have a library card, you can get a lot of free stuff through your library, like the museum passes. Yeah, I know you were talking about that, and there's things I didn't know about that either. Um, but this has been a, a very good, very good presentation. But there's um, there's a place where I live here in Meriden, so there's a place called Hubbard Park. And Hubbard Park is not only beautiful, but it, it's, it is also free. And um, there's beautiful mm -hmm. trails. There's um, uh, Craig's Castle. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, the only time it probably wouldn't be free is if there's like an event going on. Um, but yeah, wanted to put that out in the open too. Oh, that's um, very cool. Thank you so much. It's been a great presentation. Okay, Natasha. Yes, um, what a wonderful presentation, wonderful. I'm talking about Great Camp Harkness. Oh, I'm talking about yeah. Camp Harkness. I know we went there like for our in person. That was really wonderful. Like talking about passes, do you think we might do that again? Like, I mean, we did, did, did a wonderful, um, um, Wonderful day there, wonderful beach, and wonderful 
I was wondering, do you think we should get the passes again if we do that in person? What do you think? I don't see why not, but I don't. Right now it's off season, but when in the springtime, it'd be nice. Okay. Yana, I, see, I think you have another question. Uh, Lena? Yes. How are you? Really, uh, Lena Esposito. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Then what I was going to say is that um, I think so you guys didn't mention the access pass for the uh, national parks. Then that's um, the access part. People has to fill it out an application that uh, somebody is, is disabled and the doctor ha has to sign it out the form and then they have some, some access to all the national parks. Then that's the only thing that I see it, but uh, everything else, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for mentioning that. We were trying to keep it within Connecticut. Uh, yeah, Acadia National Park is only a few states over. It's gorgeous. And if you get the access pass, you can access it for free. One of my, it's one of my favorite places here in New England. Another park that we didn't mention is Elizabeth Park here in Hartford. It's also free and it's gorgeous, especially in the summertime and the spring when the roses and all the flowers bloom. It's absolutely gorgeous. And there's a playground down there too. And a overlook with a beautiful view of downtown Hartford. And if you have kiddos who love sledding, the hill at the overlook of downtown Hartford, it's a great sledding hill. And down the hill, there's a wonderful little playground that was built in memory of Anna Grace Marquez Green, who was one of the kids that was murdered at Sandy Hook. It's a beautiful playground. Another free thing, and some of you might find this a little bit morbid, but it's called Cedar Hill Cemetery. It's a historic cemetery and it's built like a park. And you can walk, you can get a map. There's a lot of famous people that are buried there. And you can get a map when you pull in to the driveway. There's a little box where you can get a map and you can go around and visit the notable graves and learn about the people. And you can also do a virtual tour, not a virtual tour, but a phone tour where you call a number and then you press the code for that specific grave. There's a little guide to all the numbers, all the code numbers that you can get when you when the driveway. And you can learn about all the people that are buried there. And they also have tours and events during the year. And yes, I know it sounds a little morbid, but it's a great place to visit. And it's it's free if you walk around by yourself and it's very peaceful. <laughs> so I would check it out. Even though, yes, it does sound morbid. They have scavenger hunts there during the year. This summer, they had a Catherine Hepburn movie night. Catherine Hepburn is one is a famous actress. She's a famous resident of Cedar Hill. JP Morgan is there. Sam Colt, who invented the revolver, is there. Beautiful place. And it's absolutely free. Check it out. There's a lot of stuff here in Connecticut that, that we walk by on a daily basis that we wouldn't think to visit. But it's always worth a visit. Another place I highly, highly recommend, and I say that because I interned there when I was in, high, in college, it's Connecticut Old State House. It's, it's free with the museum pass, but it's also very inexpensive. and. It's the only place in Connecticut where this is true. You can see a two-headed cow upstairs in the Museum of Curiosities. And it was our state's capital before the current capital building was built. And I highly recommend a visit. They do great work there. And I highly recommend paying them a visit. If you go to downtown Hartford, you probably walk by it every single day. So, so pay them a visit. And if you're in West Hartford, then, or you probably drive by the Noah Webster house every single day, but you haven't been in there. I used to volunteer there as a guide and you'd be surprised as how many people would 
say, oh, I drive by here, but I've never been here. Noah Webster was the father of the American Dictionary. I see Rachel put in accessible playgrounds. One of my favorites is Jonathan's Dream. And it's the first boundless playground that was ever built. And it's at the back of the JCC in West Hartford, Connecticut. It's a very, very beautiful playground. Let me see if I can find it in video because it's one of those playgrounds you have to see to believe. It's gorgeous. It was opened by the Barzak family. They, they lost their little boy, Jonathan, when he was an infant. And they built this playground in his memory. And they just... They... Yeah, they remodeled it a few years ago. It's beautiful and it's accessible to everyone. Kids in wheelchairs can use it. The playground is completely accessible. It's beautiful. You have to see it though. I think we'll end on it. Adds confidence. So you don't, and you don't have to be a member of the JCC to visit. It's open to everyone. Yana, is there sound with this? Uh, no, there's no sound. Everything is accessible. I love how they use like the soft turf for the the what's the right word um instead of like wood chips or things like that sorry my daughter's cranky needs okay. to go to bed <laughs> here this is one has explains it better we're getting real excited about something that I think I'm gonna be able to go on and have lots of fun at that makes me really mad when I find out that I can't go on it I've never had a playground that, that's accessible to me. He was a little baby and he used to smile. I picked up Jonathan and he couldn't hold his head up anymore. And it was... I can't even describe the feeling to see, you know, this child who was perfectly healthy and smiling when you left him, who's still smiling, his eyes are still twinkling, but he can't hold his head up any longer. The disease is called spinal muscular atrophy. And Jonathan started having problems. We spent quite a bit of time in the parks uh, with Jonathan. And, uh, and we've noticed there were some kids in the neighborhood that were wheelchair, um, and they would come to the parks and they would just sit around and watch. So then we did this concept, okay, let's build something for, for the kids, let's build something for the parents, let's build something. So we put together this team, um, and we had our first meeting in June of 1995, and we still didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into, but we had these dreaming and design parties for children with disabilities, and we asked them what kind of playground they would like. And you should have heard these kids, they were, unbelievable and they didn't want any special breaks they just wanted a place where they could play side by side with their brothers and sisters and cousins and friends i have four kids of my own um, very fortunate that they're healthy and um, i just think it was a great opportunity for us to to help All such a good right. cause it ended up with about almost 26 27 clubs um almost 150 rotarians i can't imagine anyone uh, regardless of the toughest carpenter here, having a dry eye when they see that first kid in the wheelchair go up the ramp. Is my swing somewhere over here? 
Which swing did you design? This is right in the middle. When I made a list the other day of all the companies that have contributed. Uh, that's a little bit about Jonathan's dream. And like I said, you don't have to be a member of the JCC to enjoy it. It's an amazing place where all kids can play and just be kids. Accessible. Well, thank you, Yana and Marion, for this wonderful presentation. You, you guys, I think, hit so many different places in Connecticut and so many of such a variety of activities. And you guys did a wonderful job. Any other last minute quick questions? It's about eight o'clock. Don't want to keep everybody too late. Uh, do you want to be part of this uh, dispositional volunteer program? How do you oh, sure. find, how do you find it on the bushnell.org website? So yeah, I'm gonna put the link on the because it's kind of hard to find, but we have the application. This is on the website. I don't know if we're taking new people on right now, but this is the link. Can you put it in the chat? Yep. Okay. Okay, so right here. What's the no, dot org about? And then, oh. yeah, it's right there. It looks like you put it in for the waiting room, Yana. I can put it in the regular chat oh. if you want. Oh, I got it, everyone. Why did oh. I do that? <laughs> there you go. Uh, I would like to know more about the Ted Talk this class because I, I'm thinking about doing that. Let me see. Let me do that. Get that fun with Ted and Kate. What do you think? Yeah, I would love to do an in person meeting again. Maybe we can do it in July when the beach is open. Yeah. We can do the meeting in the morning and then go swimming. Oh, we love the perfect. And that beach is awesome, by the way. If you have someone in a wheelchair, they have magic carpets, so you can bring their wheelchair right down. Mm -hmm. But that accessibility is through all the beach, the state beaches. They have water wheelchairs, they have all the accessibility. Their bathrooms are all accessible. It's not just Harkness. So check it out. You don't need to go to the cave to go to the beach. You can go to some wonderful beaches right here in Connecticut. Just something to think about while we struggle through a Connecticut winter. <laughs> I don't know if everybody saw, but I did put um, the link for an application for the, cap, the Camp Harkness Pass in the chat. 